Hi, welcome to my channel where I share my knowledge on programming the DJI Teledrones with Python. And today we're going to finish our keyboard controller by adding our drone object to our drone controller class and binding some key presses to it. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Now, we're going to have six steps in our module to complete our Tele TKinter drone controller. The first step we're going to do is initialize our drone as a part of our controller class. And then we just have to do a slight adjustment to our video stream method to work with the Telos video frames. Step two will be to define a method then for taking off and landing. And after doing this, we'll want to bind our take off and land button to this method. Following this, we'll get our key presses and our run application method. And then on to step four, we're going to develop a way to send commands to the drone. And then with these commands, we're going to finish our key press binding by setting their command equal to the commands that we specify in step four. Finally, we just have to do a little bit of cleanup and we'll be ready to use our keyboard controller. Let's get into it. Okay, looking at step one, we've broken it down into more details. So our first step is we're gonna need to import our DJI Telopop library and from this specifically we want to import the Tello module so that we can get our Tello class. Now within our drone controllers initialization method we're going to initialize our drone object which is our Tello class. And we initialize this as a part of our drone controller class. Now when we initialize our drone controller class we also want to have the drone connected to and have its video stream turned on. So we're going to call the connect and stream on methods. After this we also need to create a frame object that's a part of the class so that we can update our stream video method. So we do this by typing self.frame and we're setting this equal to the drone's get frame read method, which if you remember from our video streaming video, this is how we get frames from our Tello drone to display. Now, we're not gonna call the current frame here because we're gonna do this in a second when we go to our video stream method. So we have our self.frame, which is equal to the get frame read method. Now we're going to use this here instead of our video capture object, as we don't want to stream from the webcam anymore, but our drone. So in this method, we'll specify this as a frame variable, and we'll set it equal to our self.frame. And if you remember correctly, when we call the get frame read method, we call it on the current frame when we're processing our video. And there you have it. Step one's complete. On to step two, it is now time to define a method for taking off and landing. So to do this, we first are going to have to import threading because we're going to use a thread to send either our takeoff or land commands. Next, we're going to go down and we're going to find a class method for our drone controller. And we're going to call this takeoff land. And this will take the self as the argument because it's a part of our drone controller class. Now, we're going to have to go ahead and use the Tello class and it's is flying attribute, if you remember from a previous video. So how are we going to use this? We're going to use this to set the command for taking off or landing dependent on if it's set to true or false. Looking at the Telopi library, we see the Tello class has its is flying attribute set to false initially. So this helps us understand that when we take off, we set it to true. And when we land, it's automatically set to false. Now with this, we're going to go ahead and check first if the is flying attribute is true. Now, if you remember correctly, if it is flying, that means that this command that we're going to want to send is not to take off again, but it's going to, in fact, be to have the drone land so that we can set this to false. We'll do this using a separate thread that we can run in the background so that we cannot interfere with our uh, video stream method. We'll use a Lambda function here and we're going to call self.drone.land, which is the same way as calling the land method of the Tello class, except we're doing this for our drone controller class in the way that our drone is an attribute of the class. Now, I have a little bit of keynotes here on threading and the start uh, method we use to initialize a thread and have it perform its actions. But uh, I'm not going to go into too deep of details here to explain this. Just know that this is going to allow us to take off and land without interfering with our video stream. 
Now, lastly, we have to set our command for our takeoff and land button to this method as such. On step three, we're ready to get key presses, and we're going to do this in our run application method. Now we're going to do this by first creating a temporary frame to capture our key presses. So this frame we'll go ahead and call input frame, and we want it to be a part of our drone controller class. So we create it in our init method. Now since we're creating a frame and we haven't yet for this project, we have to go ahead and specify this in our imports from the tkinter library as so. So now that we've got our temporary frame and in our run application method, after we pack the button, we're going to go ahead and bind some key presses and key releases to this frame so that we can acknowledge this input and do something with it. We're not going to do anything now, but when we do, we'll do this using another Lambda function and we'll use this by having an event triggered. So for now, let's go ahead and define all of our key presses. So the drone can move up, down, left, right but it can also go forward and backwards, and it can yaw left and yaw right, or rotate left or rotate right. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have the W, A, S, and D keys control half of these movements, and the up, down, left, and right arrow keys control the other parts of these movements. So we need to control what's happening when we press a key, but we also need to control what happens when that key is released such that we don't have a bunch of inputs coming in from a bunch of different keys at once. So as you can see here, we're going to go ahead and bind all of those keys described to this input frame. And we're not going to have anything happen with it by setting our Lambda event to none for now. So after we go ahead and we bind all of the desired keys to our frame, we have to go ahead and pack it just like we did with the button. So let's go ahead and do a little cleanup, put everything together concisely, and then right below here, we're going to go ahead and pack this input frame. As you can see by the comment here, we also have to give it the focus to this. Now, by giving this frame focus, we are able to actually capture the key presses from the background. And by the background, I mean, we don't see this frame. We don't really know this is going on, except for the fact that we know how we're using the, the program. So by using focus.set, our run application method continues in an infinite loop as per usual. But while it's also updating our video stream and constantly updating our GUI, we are also having updates to what events are happening or what key press events or key release events are happening. Now on to step four. It's time to develop a way to send commands to our drone. And as you can see here, I have a new module called flightcommands.py. Now this module I've used prior to this video when I first started experimenting with Teldrones and I got it from this GitHub where this guy made a Flido drone is what he called it using the Teledrone. So essentially, I'd like to pick attribution where it is needed, but I have adjusted this method so that it takes in a speed parameter and maybe some slight adjustments to some wording. So continuing on, we have a stop a fly method, which takes in the direction to fly, which is each key press controls a different direction. Let's leave it at that. And then it sends RC controls. Now this is the way that we are going to send all of our controls is as RC command controls. Now we're going to go ahead and use our start flying method in the GUI itself. So for the start flying function, it takes in an event, a direction, the drone object, and the speed. Then we first initialize our left, right, forward, backward, up, down, and yaw velocities all to zero. You'll see why in a second. After setting these to zero, we're going to go ahead and check our arguments. This is taken from our key press events. So if you can understand this, then you might understand that we're going to implement this in our run application method with our key press events. So when a key pressed, 
we're going to have the specified key be the direction in which the drone moves. So our event's taken from the Lambda event, and then we get our direction from the key specified. Our drone, we're going to pass. That's part of our drone controller class. The speed, we'll go ahead and have to specify that also for our class. Now given this, we'll call this for each key press find in our run application method. And depending on what key is correlated to which direction, we're going to go ahead and set the speed for that direction's movement, either positive or negative, where the positive values correlate to our right, forward, up, and yaw right directions and negatives to our left, backwards, down, and yaw left directions. Now, after we check all of our directions, we have one last if block. Here it states if our set of directions, left, right, forward, backward, up, down, or yaw velocity, yaw left, yaw right, if it's not equal to zero, as we initialized up above, well, if it's equal to zero, then that means no events happened and no presses occurred. But if it's not equal to zero, then a button was pressed, and we need to send a control command to our drone. We're going to use threading to do this as well so that we don't interfere with any of our video stream or other threading operations. So using a thread and a lambda, we go ahead and send the fly command, which you saw is a function in our flight commands module above. And it takes in the directions. And by the directions, I mean the speeds. So. When we send this fly command, we send it as a set of our directions, which are in fact the speed to go in that direction, with plus and minus being the left or right, forward or backward, as stated. We also pass our drone so that we know that this is where we're sending RC controls, as seen in the fly method. And we call start as we do with threads. Now, we have a way to fly the drone. We also need something to control when our key releases occur. This is our stop flying method. Our stop flying method takes in the event from our bind, which uses a lambda event to send the commands. It also takes the drone, and it simply sends the RC controls with a zero parameter for all the directional speeds. This results in the drone to hover in place. So with that being said, we got to go ahead and specify our speed parameter. Back in our drone controller class, we'll do this in the initialization method. And we'll go ahead and define this as self.speed. And we're going to set it to 50, which the maximum speed we can set it to is 100. So let's just go half that for sake of ensuring that we don't crash our drone when we're testing this right away. On to step five, we're going to bind the key press to our control commands. Now, in order to bind to these commands in our flight commands module, we have to first import from the flight commands module our start flying and our stop flying functions. And then we will go into our run application method. So time to go in here and as stated we're going to go ahead and set the key press events equal to our start flying method. And we're going to pass in our lambda event the direction to move which so up is going to be w. We pass our drone object and our speed. Now we're going to do this for each key press bound key. Now for each key release we're also going to call our stop flying method which will have cause the drone to hover in place. So for the key press W we'll have it go up and when the key is released as we're going to do for each bound key we're going to just have the drone stop flying. Now if you'll bear with me you'll see I'm going to go ahead and do this for each and then I'll come back and specify how each key controls the directions for the drone to fly.
Okay, so we went through all of our, our keys, and I'd like to just go through each of the directions, even though they're stated here. Um, the W key is going to control our up movements, S, down movements. A will be our yaw left, D will be our yaw right, and then our up arrow will be forward, down arrow will be backward, left arrow will be roll left, and the right arrow will be roll right. Now we've officially bound all of our key presses to our control commands in our flight commands module. Now step six is just to do a little bit of cleanup. As you can see in our cleanup, we don't need our cap.release because we're not using our video capture object for our video stream. Instead, we're going to call self.drone.end, which will call our drone's stream off method and do all the appropriate cleanup needed so that our resources are all released and our program is properly terminated. And there you have it. We've gotten cleanup done and that's it. Now we're going to go ahead and test our finished Tkinter keyboard controller for the Telodrome. So here we are, we're out in the country where we're in a safe pace to test our keyboard controller and um, in a second here you'll try and see it. I apologize for any noise and if it's difficult to hear, but um, this is the safest place. We have a little wind today so we might see some interference with that, but let's hope for the best. Thanks for watching today's video. Now, if you noticed a little bit of frame drops in our Tkinter controller, I suggest that you try resizing your frames after you specify your frame variable in our video stream method. So once you set your frame equal to our self dot frame on the current frame, then you should pass that to cv2.resize to resize the window to your desired dimensions. I suggest 480 by 720. This should uh, create or get rid of our loss of video frames and make for a lot smoother of a video stream. Now, if you like this video and you like what I've been putting out, please like, share, and subscribe. It'd really help me. Also, if you have anything you'd like to see done with the Teledrones, I'd really love your feedback. Now, until next time, I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Bye.